I once heard, well, it was that woman, that woman who I went to the angel class and she was actually a channel for Archangel Raphael. And now I get it, her big energy. I was like, whoa, that's Raphael energy. But she described the angelic workforce as just a huge, huge workforce filled with angels sitting around just waiting for somebody to give them a job. And we just never think about it. Like, why don't we ask our angels to help? And that was the last question that I had for us tonight was like, what are some ways that you call on your angels to help you with your day, your life, your work, et cetera? Oh my gosh, always. Nothing is, there's no task too small. I call on, you know, the, like if you think about the specialty classes of angels and, you know, to what may be included in that are sometimes is that they're actually activating nature spirits, but it doesn't matter, you know, if, if I need some help with technology, I call on the technology angels. If I need some help making a choice, I call on the choice angel, you know, the ones to help me to be clear and to make choices. Um, like you said, choosing the color of your outfit for the day. I, for some reason, I, I, I call on Shamuel to help me to remember things, to help me to recall things. And I know other archangels are associated with recall and with memory. And like Zadkiel is associated with memory, but I have always called on Shamuel for, for, because to me, it's like bringing a piece of me back, bringing something important back to me. And so just, at, there's nothing that is too small because everything that we do is just as important as the next thing. And there's, well, like the, the tree told me that one time when I connected with the tree and I I've said, you know, I was putting one hand on one branch that was warm in the sun and one hand on one branch that was cool in the shade. And I said, that's really, that feels really nice. And the tree said, thanks. I chose it. I chose to grow here for you in this moment. And, you know, like, I'm feeling like how arrogant of me, but no, it's because this moment, this connection is as important as anything else in all time and space. And so anything that you do, any moment, any now that you're in is God's now. Any moment that you're in is God's now, and the angels will help you with it. They're watching and loving you through absolutely everything that you are doing, experiencing, um, expanding, and because you are doing it from that will of one, and that's what they are helping us to. They're holding space for us and guiding us and guarding us and supplying us, giving us resource for any and all things. Absolutely. I've written a few things down that <clears throat> they're particularly good helping us with, but I do want to say that one of my most joyful interactions with angels, which is just pure companionship, maybe driving along in my car and it's just me and I'm just chit-chatting. I'm talking, I'm laughing. I tell jokes. And sometimes when I get angry, I do yell <laughs> and they will tell you that. I mean, but I have a full bodied relationship with them. It's not just some mystical experience when I am channeling with my Lemurian quartz and now I can contact the angels. No, I am driving along in my automobile. <laughs> I'm talking to Michael. Well, I always talk to Michael and say, Hey, make sure we're safe because he's for what whatever reason he helps out with travel and cars and making sure we're safe and there are no accidents, but I'm just, it, the companionship is always available to us. And so for those of us who might feel like we're alone or maybe we're in families and relationships where we are misunderstood and don't feel like we can connect. And so many spiritual people just feel like we're the odd one out. There's something weird about me or I don't belong in this family or on this planet. <laughs> a lot of us feel that way, but the angels are there truly as a source of friendship and companionship to walk this path with us. And so I spend a lot of time in that frequency, not necessarily asking for stuff. I do that as well, but really mm -hmm. enjoying that. Um, but let me get on, touch on a few of these things that they are just so well built for uh, in terms of our life. And the first thing would be health and wellness whether that's because you have an ailment now or an illness and you would like a miracle or you would like resources or you would like to find a doctor, you can turn to your angels to help you clear that, to give you a miracle or to get you to that resource. Or if, for example, you just want to know how to eat for you. There's so much information out there. Should I eat raw? Should I eat paleo? Should I eat keto? Should I eat gluten-free? Like what is the best for me so I can thrive and be healthy and do the work that I came to do. Angels love to step in and help us co-create things like nutritional plans for ourselves and how much water we should drink and the herbs and the minerals that we should be taking. Also, for those of us who are interested in intuitive abilities, like you want to 
get your third eye open or you want your clairvoyance to come online. Or when you were a kid, you used to be a medium, but that seems to have gone away. But now you're kind of ready to call it back into your life. You can absolutely call on the angels to help you with your intuitive faculties. These are just spiritual gifts. There's no stigma around a spiritual gift. There's nothing creepy or scary about a spiritual gift. It is entirely natural and we all have them. And we have them because we're meant to use them. And so if we want to use them and we want to bring these abilities online, or maybe you're an empath and going into the Walmart completely shorts you out and fries you out and you you find that you're in a weird energetic state, call on your angels to help you to manage your energy or to give you a dispensation of energy to bring you back to center. Also purpose angels. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really figure out my purpose until late thirties, early forties. And even then it was vague. It wasn't until within three or four years that I finally boiled down my mission statement for my life. And I was trying for a long time, but Angels are great with that. They are great with pointing your attention to what it is you need to understand and aligning you back to your soul's blueprint. Mm -hmm. We all came into this life with a blueprint, meaning a map. We all had our backpack with all the tools and everything we need, but we get lost and detoured and we make mistakes and we have a hard time getting back to the path. Well, the angels will help you to get back on your purpose path and figure out for you what you're supposed to be doing. If you're in the lab, I dare say, Tricia, that you're probably here to shine your light in some way and to facilitate the shift and the spiritual awakening that's happening on the planet now. But how? Well, to find that out, check out your angels. Yeah. And there's many other areas where they can help, but I had to throw in relationships because as I have said, and as you know, relationships can really amplify everything good about us and what we're doing in our life. We can have people who are really supporting us, but then there are those relationships with people who are toxic, with whom we are codependent, people who are abusive, condescending, critical, who do damage to us, but it's hard for us to extricate ourselves out of that situation. Well, if you find yourself in situations like that and you need strength, you need clarity, you need courage, call in your angels because one of the most powerful things that we can do is prune our relationship garden. There's Tony Robbins who says the five people you hang out with the most. Now, these aren't the five people who are the most important to you. These are the five people that are getting your minutes. These are the five people you become. You become like them. So who are these people? What kind of changes do you need to make so that you can hit the next level in your life? Well, angels can help you with that as well. Don't you love them? <laughs> 